Okay. Thanks so much to everyone who has joined and who's done this. I am amazed with the amount of people that have done it. I really didn't think we'd get that many this time. And I think we got more than last time actually joining in and, you know, doing the hats and doing all three days, which is amazing. So thank you so much. And I've seen some amazing pieces and puts mine to shame. I just love all your work. I've, I had sort of three categories and the, the first and then the, and then people who came second and then people came first. Um, so I was normally put people in three different categories, but there was nobody in the bottom group whatsoever. And nearly everybody was in the second one. And then a massive chunk of people was also in the top one. So it was really hard to pick. Um, I was trying to look at, you know, your progress and the design at the end of it, but also sort of what you've been through and your progress and everything and trying to put it all together. So um, I will announce those soon. First of all, we're going to put some elastic in and I'll show you something with a feather. And then we're going to go to prizes later on and tell you who has one. For the sharer one, I've got a teapot and I'm going to pick that out. Yeah, um, and for the other first prize and second prize, I've chosen those, but like I said, really hard. So I think I got down to 20 and then I started picking out of a hat and then I jigged it a little bit more and then I ended up picking some winners from that. But I could have given out so many prizes and I feel really bad that I can't give out prizes to everybody because you've all done so well. So well done for that. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is sew the elastic onto the hat which would be helpful because then you can wear it then i'm going to show you about feathers then i'm going to quickly talk to you about the millinery academy if you don't mind just for people that might want to join it just quickly go behind the scenes and just show you what goes on in the background there because that, that's where i teach people how to make hats online uh, all around the world and you can join from anywhere so i can teach you about that quickly and then we'll do the prizes and what's the last thing yeah We'll just do the prizes and then we can have a chat. Right, so the first thing is your elastic. Now you might have flat elastic or you might have this round elastic, which is what we use for millinery. If you've got flat and that's all you've got, that's absolutely fine. Um, just you'll get some others at some other time. I got mine on a big reel like this. It's expensive, it's about 45 pounds. I got this from Barnett and Lawson, but it lasts you, it lasts me over a year and I make a lot of hats. So it'll last you a long time. It's normally quite wide, I've used half of it. So you can always get that and then you can just take off your own. So actually it is worth it because if you go and buy the ones with metal on the end, you can only use that size. So that is worth it. Clients have bigger heads, smaller heads, you can cut your own. The way to measure your piece is if you've got your hat on and your hat is here say my hat is going to be about that big i'll get a piece of elastic and i'll put it around the back of my head feel free to come on if you want to ask any questions as well just unmute yourself uh, pull that around and then i'll have one end there where i think the hat is going the edge of the hat is and then i'm just going to pull the other one around and then I just pull it a little bit, about two inches, just so it's pulling on my head, but it's not making me feel sick. It's not too tight. I'm just pulling it probably, you know, just that much, about, that's probably, yeah, about two inches, maybe just under two inches, just to make sure it's comfortable for you. And it's going to go around the back of the head, behind the ears, and then up. So if I just put that into the other position, if I've got that's about the right space for the hat that I'm making, I'll just pull it a little bit, bring my fingers in, make sure I feel it's okay. Normally that's all right for most clients, but you might want to try it on them. Then that's gonna be my measurement. Then I'll cut my end off. So then I've got my piece. Because I can't, you can't really measure the size because everybody's different in size so you wouldn't say have 20 inches as a standard so that's my piece and then my end here I'll go to the camera my end here I tend to fold them over so I've got a loop you see that on my head um, I'll have a little loop and then I'll find the middle of that loop the loop is about one centimeter in size I'll find the middle of that loop and I'll just put my thumb into the middle of it and then I'm going to get my needle and just poke that through the tiniest little bit of elastic on the side. 
So not right through the whole middle, just a tiny bit on the edge of the elastic. Because if I put it right through the middle, I don't want the elastic to break or become weak. So I'm just putting it on the very side of it. Pull that through, leave a little bit of a tail of thread. And then I'm going to wrap it. So I'm wrapping it around about 10 times and I've still got my thumb and finger in the middle of the elastic. See, that's my end and I'm putting my thumb and finger into the middle and then I can just wrap. About 10 times till I feel it's enough. And then I will put my needle and thread underneath the thread that I've just wrapped. So I'm not putting it through the elastic to make that weaker. I've only done the one stitch from the side through the elastic. Now I'm pushing my needle under all that thread. Pull it and you get the loop. Back through the loop. Pull that tight. I'll do that again. And I might do it a third time just for luck. So I'm pushing it underneath the thread. Can you all see that all right? Do I need to be... On a bit of white paper. Perfect. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So I just push that through. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, thank you. Gently, gently, because I don't want any knots. Pull that tight. And then most of the time this works, sometimes it might not be tight enough. But let's go. Just pull it. And if that's not coming undone, you're good to go. But if you pull it and then it just sort of comes off, you just haven't put it tight enough. Can you get yourself again, please? So I just have done that. And so then you see, if I hold the paper up again, you can see I've just got, oh, it's tiny, tiny, but I've just got this little loop there. And then I can use that loop to sew in here, rather than doing a knot, because if you've got this and you just made a knot in it, then it's hard to get your needle through. You'd end up putting it through quite a few times. It might break up. So this, I just find is much easier. And then I do that on this piece. So if I put this back onto my head and then I figure out exactly where I'm going to sew this bit, so I come from here with my finger behind my ear, straight up. With a normal hat, you do it on the edge, but with felt hats, you have to do it underneath because you're not going to do it here because then it would pull that down because the hat is sometimes wider than your head. So with my finger, I'm going straight up in there and then I'm going to put a pin in there. And then with the other side, doing the same, go straight up with my finger, and that's about there. Oops. And that goes that side. You can just check it again. The other one's that side. A massive pin. So then I've got two pins either side and then I sew my elastic in the middle of one of the pins so I'd sew the elastic about there just lost my needle excuse me now always remember to sew it into the hat so I sew it so the so the little loop that I've made is going down into the hat. So as this elastic pulls and I sew it in, it just pulls it a little bit. And if I sewn it in quite well, it'll stay in place. But if I sewed it the other way around in like that, so the little bit is sticking out, the elastic will do this because it's going on your head and it'll pull it and it'll just yank it out. So you want to make sure your loop is going into the hat. Oh, 
So I'm just placing it there. And then I'm doing one little stitch. At the bottom. One, two. And then one on the side. And then you're just basically going around and around it. So I'm doing there one on the side. And then one underneath. After you've sewn all this on, you could put a Peter shim in or a lining in to hide all of this. So I'm just going through the, the middle of that loop, but I'm again not actually going through the elastic to make it weak. I'm just sewing the loop on by going into the middle of the loop, one side, the other side, down the bottom, and then a bit underneath where my thread is. That side again, and then underneath this back bit here as well, because otherwise that will become weak and you'll end up just sewing this bit. So you need to just sew here as well and make it stronger. And you just keep going around it and around it and around it until you feel it's strong enough, about 10 stitches again, and then pull it. And if it doesn't come undone, you're all good. And you don't go all the way through the felt, do you? I'm sorry, yes. No, I just grab a little bit of the felt. So I'm not going through to this side of the felt because the felt is quite thick here. I'm probably going through half of the thickness of this felt, just catching a little bit. And I use a thread to match the elastic and not the hat. So I'm using black thread for this. If I had white elastic, I'd use white thread. Or if I coloured in my white elastic, I'd use whatever colour that was. Because if I use green thread on this, then all this thread will show up here and it will look messy. So if I actually use black and then I keep the stitch really close to the elastic and go inside the felt, then you don't see it. And the only threads you'll see are on top of the elastic. Um, and if those are black, it'll look neater. That's Any good. questions? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, you might get onto this anyway, but if you were to put Peter Shim in that, whereabouts would you position that just to sort of give us an idea? So this one's done and on um, this circle disc sort of area in here, so I would put it here, coming around under here and then round the back. I think a lining would look nicer lining would finish it off really nicely and then you could put petersham on top of the line but try and have like an oval lining or a round lining and just covering it so it's just covering this little bit here on the edge so, and then the, you're all fine to let everything else show but you just want to cover that so i'd put it in and then i'd have it going down and around and back up thank you welcome One more. Are you all doing it with me? Or are you watching it? You're going to do it later. I can see some of you sewing. So that, that should be all right. And then I can just yank it. And if that's good for me, that'll be good for my customer. And that's then right. work on the other side. Yeah. Just to ask, you're, you're saying put a Petersham, but what is a Petersham? Oh, sorry. How have I got in here? Ah. Yes. Peter Shum is a thing, it's like this. We use a lot in millinery um, and it's a, it, you get ribbons and then you get Peter Shum and Peter Shum has actually got these little sort of loops that go over in the, on the edge. Um, more than, ribbon would have an actual edge edge to it, but Peter Shum is a special thing we use for millinery and it's got, it goes, it's got little tiny bubs on the edge. So that's why how you can tell the difference. We'll just ask them in the shop. Um, and you want proper Petersham because then when you put, when you sew it around the edge of something and you put boiling water to it, it'll shrink to fit. But if you didn't do that, if you didn't have Petersham, sorry, it wouldn't shrink if you just had normal ribbon. So it just looks like ribbon and it's just nice to finish off the inside of a hat. And if you'd like to put a lining in, I submit some one sec. If you'd like to put a lining in, I have a tutorial on YouTube, a free one on how to do a lining. It's like a quick video. And it's lovely lining with pleats. So that's really right. nice to put in. 
thank you. That'd be nice just to fit in there. All right, so that's the way you do it and then just pull it and then you do the other side. So then I would do the other side, I'd get another loop and then I'd put that there and then I put it on. And the way to put the hat on is to pull the elastic round to the back of your head, then pull the whole thing down to your neck, push all your hair out and then you can pull it up to where you want it to be. Also, you have to think about with the client, if they want it on the left side, the right side, or in the middle, because wherever you put it, that the elastic will change. Because if I want it this side, perfect. But if my client goes, oh no, actually I want it on this side, and I've made the elastic to go this side, it might not work right on that side. So make sure you know what side of the hat, head it's gonna go on to. Then that sits there, and then I could put a brush through, just to make sure the elastic is touching my head. So in here, the elastic will actually be touching my head and I won't see it because I would have put a brush or my hand through there. And then you also won't see it at the back because it's under my hair. So when you see people doing that, tell them no, because that'll hurt them and it'll take too, you know, not good. Um, so down, flip it up and then put a brush through this side. Or leave it like that if you don't want to. So now I'm going to show you a feather that I love. This is a pheasant feather. And then this one, you can pick which side you want to keep. So I don't necessarily keep the whole thing. But you just have a look at it and see which side you do want to keep. So I'm going to keep this side. I'm going to take off this side. And then I'm going to make a fancy wiggle with it just to knead it up a bit and just pull this down. Or you could leave it like that. You could leave that top bit and make a point out of it. Then with the oil of your hands, if you find it's broken up a little bit, you can just run your fingers up it and the oil of your hands actually help put it back together. I'm going to take a bit of the bottom off. So I've got that. Then I get my scissors closed. And then I just gently, gently bend it slightly like that. A lot of feathers you can quickly do it with your fingers if it's a biot or anything else but with this one we just do it a little bit more gently. So I've curled that that way and then this top bit I can curl the other way. I love these. And then you get that nice curly effect. So that's really nice to put into a hat to have something a bit different rather than just a straight you know pheasant feather just makes it a bit more cleaner and then fiddle with it with your fingers again to get the meeting and at the top here where we've gone in you've got more excess just fiddle with that a little uh, bit Catherine yeah did I see you not open your scissors to bend your feather yeah keep them closed okay. I might be using that not cutting anything I'm just using it to bend so um, I've just got my finger, my scissors on there and my thumb on the other side. So my thumb is there, my scissors are there and then I can just bend it a little bit. And then this bit up here. Um, yeah, inside. I can just bend that that way. So you can't see my thumb. It's so my thumb is this side and my finger is this side. And then if your top bit here is not very pointy or there's too much excess, then you could just go and trim a little bit. Catherine? Not too bad. Yeah? Have you dyed that peacock feather? It is dyed. I haven't dyed it. You can buy them like this. All oh, right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have um, some here that I've had that are dyed the same blue as Catherine's. 
lovely, isn't it? I've actually got another. Oh no, where is it? Oh, not so here. I got asked to do some for the carriage driving for one of my friend's trilbies. Mm. And she wants some blue in hers. So, yeah. But I can get mine from the middle of a field when no pheasants are about, so I don't have to pay for my pheasant feathers. Oh, good. Just put them in the freezer. Yep, exactly. So I, I have, you could have one that way, you could have another one going that way if you want a bit of a dramatic, or you could put them in the middle of your head and have horns. That's quite cool with that. Uh, just to show you some other little ones, for those who don't know, these ones are coke feathers, but these are stripped coke which means I've got a whole coat, which is a chicken feather. And then we've basically just stripped off all of the bottom. So you can buy them like this, or you can do it yourself, which means you can pick however many you want and your colors and it's a bit cheaper. So if you go to a millinery supplier, some of them sell whole meters of coat feathers that are not stripped in all different colors. You just buy a whole meter for 10, 15 pounds and you've got loads, probably hundreds odd. I don't know how many is in there, 100, 200. And then you just pick out what you want. And then all you have to do is like before is peel down hold it tight and peel down so we're not cutting it we're just peeling some of it off so i don't need my scissors in my hand just pulling down did you all see that all right shall i do it again okay so that's a strip coat and then this one here is a biot this one comes in a just a sort of wiggly, straightish way. And then you just get your scissors and curl your scissors up it, and then you get this lovely curl. So that's an interesting one. And then also with the bio, sorry, the stripped coke, and you can do this with goose feathers, you can make it look like that. And I've just peeled some of it out again. So with here, I've just sort of peeled a little bit down and taken out that section. You see it better on the hat. And then you know peel it off the bottom whichever so peel out sections and then that can go on the hat as well so you can do all sorts of things with feathers i used to think before i started millinery that they came like this you know they're made like this and obviously not you can do so many amazing things with them so that's nice and then i just want to show you how to wrap them together so some of you are asking how to put feathers on if you've got Where's my big one gone? If you had the big one that I showed you a minute ago, that one you could sew on on its own because it's got a nice thick quill. Here, this white inside, you can colour that in or you could dye it again or you could get a Sharpie fabric pen and you could colour that in or you could spray it or paint it back to a colour to match. And then you can use the end to sew on. But if I had things like these, and these are held together with thread, I've already wrapped them. Um, but if they were on their own, they're so thin, that you wouldn't want to sew through that because you would just come out. Um, anybody pulled it, it would just come out. So you need to wrap them together. So I would get some thread, get all of my bits. Catherine, do you always put your um, feathers in the freezer? I never um, heard that before. Oh, only if they're natural. So if there's somebody's, I've got buzzard wings in my freezer at the moment. If someone gives you something which is from the countryside, just because they have mites on them, put okay. them in the freezer and then it'll kill everything for two weeks, I think it is. Um, okay. I leave it in there for longer though, just to make sure. And then yeah. bring them out and then they should be all right. Um, also clean okay. all the fat off before if there is any on there. Uh, but okay. if you buy them from any millinery supplier, then they've already been treated and they've been bleached and dyed and everything, so you're all right. Only for natural. All right, thank you. So that's mine. I haven't, I've just cut off the end, so they're all loose. Um, I will just get a little bit of thread in my hand and I'm just going to wrap it. Again, about 10 times till I feel that's really tight and secure. Some people might use glue at this point, but I think if you just sew, I've only sewn. I don't really like glue because then you can't take it apart afterwards if you change your mind. Or if your client changes his mind. Uh, so just thread that. Wow, I need glasses now. Right. So we've wrapped that a few times, then I'm just going to go through it.
wrap again through the bottom. You don't have to go through every stalk, but it's just going through once or twice. I do that three times. And then knot it off by going again through the loop, pull that tight. Then I'll grab a bit of thread through the loop, pull that tight. Then I can check it to make sure it's all right. If I just yank my feathers, if they were going to come out, they'd come out at this point. You don't want them to come out when your client buys the hat. So just check it and make sure they're all right. So they're all secure in there. And then I can sew that on. I'm really sorry to interrupt. There's mm -hmm. some people on the Facebook page that are saying they're in the waiting room and, and can't get in. Thank you. Okay, I'll the two. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for keeping an eye on that. That's good. Um, right. So if we're going to put those on, then I could sew that on now as, as one bundle. I could put some stitches there. I could hide it in here. I could hide it in there and do some stitches and that will not come out because I bound them all together. Then if I was going to put this one on, I could just sew that on on its own. All right. So that's some feathers. Is there any other questions with feathers, anyone? Or do you want me to do anything um, again? If you put a bridle through the bottom half of the quill of something like a pheasant feather, we'll put the hole through so you can actually stitch it through the centre of the quill. So you've got a hole through a with a bridle and put it through so it's actually stitching through the centre of the bottom of the quill of the feather and that holds it in place as well. You mean with something like this, yeah. or the quill? Yeah, something yeah. that's got the thicker quill at the bottom. If you use a bridle or something with a sharp point to put it through, you can then stitch through the middle of it and you're not having to worry about breaking your needles at the same time. Yeah, that's Sorry, it comes from doing leather work as well, yeah. doing the carriages, using the bridle to put the holes in. I see, yeah. Yeah, I never use needles because they can break, can't they? I always yeah. use pins or, or a thick one like this. Yeah, that's but I've used, I've got to tell um, people that. With the poinsettia on my hat, because it's the plastic through the middle, I put the bridle through it to put the hole through the plastic before I stitched it to the hat. Yeah, so that, have you got the tool there? If I unmute myself and just show everyone. Do you have Hang it? Hang on a sec. So that is a uh, instrument to be able to put holes through for milliners, but you can use things like this as well. Yeah, this is what they use for leather work. Can you just hold it up a sec? Yeah, brilliant, thank you. So it's what they call a bridle, because you're trying to put that, a needle through patent leather, you need to put the holes in first. And so this end is really, really sharp. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But that is a really good tool as well that you could probably use for millinery to go through like the ends of thick quills of feathers. Yeah, I think a lot of milliners do actually. It's a good point. So then, just, yeah. You can also use a needle. If you heat it in a candle, get it hot, and you pierce your feather stalk with a hot needle, you'll find that the feather probably won't break. Mm. Okay. So the other thing is this pin, I just could show you how to do it. So if we're just putting it through, you can just sort of push that through. Normally the, the quill's a little bit thicker than this, so that is easy. But another point to just, so just ladies just remind me, um, if you don't want to see your stitch, you can actually put this in sideways. Because that, oh, just mute a second, getting um, feedback. Sorry. So sometimes with these, you would make two holes. I would make them about an inch apart from each other and then sew in one place using the hole that you have put in with a bradle or with a hot um, needle or with your pin if, it's, if you can get it in with the pin. Um, when, if I do it with a pin, I, I wiggle it. I don't just shove it straight in, I always wiggle it. So I would make two holes and then I come up the side, down through the middle of the hole, up the other side, down through the middle of the hole. So you're doing a bit of a figure of eight there and then there. If you don't want to see the stitch at all, instead of pushing your needle down that way, I push it sideways that way. And then you can come up a little bit up the side through the middle of it and down and then up the side again through the middle of it and down and then you don't see the stitch except for at the back. 
It's just a little trick. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm just now going to quickly go through the Millinery Academy and then we can do all the prizes and see who has won. And sorry, if you want to ask any questions, just unmute yourself and ask away. What kind of needles do you recommend? I have so many needles, I, but what do you recommend? What do you sew with? I sew with ordinary needles. You can get millinery needles and you can get slightly curved needles for certain things that you're doing. Um, I tend to use, this is mine, a reasonably, the sort of, it's, it's not, you see that? It's, it's not very, it's not thin that it's gonna break, but it's not too thick that it's gonna make holes in my, my you know hats too many holes because I don't want to see any of the stitches so I want a reasonably slim needle and I just want to when I do it, I have to make a tiny little stitch um, and I have my stitches really small about a millimeter wide next to each other so you'll hardly see any of the stitches but it's just a normal dressmaking needle you can buy specific millinery ones and you can buy curved ones as well as long as they're not too thick Okay. I think Lucy's asking you a question, but she hasn't unmuted herself. Ah. I can okay. see her talking Thank rapidly you. and loads of hand <laughs> movements, but she's not unmuted herself. Thank you. Take it away, Lucy. Right. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to um, just ask, what actually is the difference between Peter Shum's and Grow Grain? Because sometimes when you're looking for ribbon, you get grey grain comes up in the exact colour that you want. And oh, yeah. is it essentially the same thing or not? Is it? I know there were some people chatting about it in the. I used to think it was the same thing because people always talk about grow grain. It's like the old fashioned ribbon. It's a lovely name for ribbons. And I used to think grow grain was Petersham, but it's not. So you need to make sure you are getting at exactly Petersham. Otherwise, you know, some grow grains are just grains and they won't, um, they won't shrink when you put hot water to them. Uh, I bought one not that long ago, which I thought was Petersham. I won't say the company I bought it from. I thought it was because that's what they named it, but they also had grow grain written next to it. And when I got it and, I, and it didn't work. Yeah, I, I find just make sure. But most of the companies um, that I listed before, and I have in the academy, um, and that we've that I put in some of the when I talk about it, groups and lives and things like that, all those guys will sell you Petersham. So all the main millinery suppliers, just go to a big one. Hi, Catherine. Um, I just wanted to uh, pass on uh, an idea. Today, I used um, gold nail varnish to uh, paint my bush uh, because I couldn't find any spray. So I used gold nail varnish. So it's a tip for anyone for to, to paint their bits and pieces. And I oh. used it for some leaves. Oh, well done. I love that. Especially if yeah. it's got sparkly bits in it. Yeah, it's so got sparkly gold. Yeah. yeah. Fab. In the academy, I actually show you how to do a backer, and um, and for some of that, we sealed the edges with varnish, because then oh. with a sparkly one, and then you can get a nice sort of colour as well, a nice texture, and it seals the edges. I can see some of you are asking some questions in the uh, chat box as well. Uh, Catherine, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I know we haven't stiffened this style of hat because um, we haven't needed to and it's been really good um, but would you re can you recommend a good stiffener for felt in particular yeah I use the old smelly kind of stiffener the, the old-fashioned one but they can't always send them in the post these days I know that not everyone does I think Parkins did the last time I ordered it from them I think it was the last one yeah so they I'm sure they do but if you go to any of the companies just make sure you do get if you have to get the PVA mix one you do get the felt one because there is one going around that is said it's for both Petersham and millinery felt but I find that that one didn't wasn't strong enough so yeah. definitely buy if you get the PVA mix white glue Definitely make sure it's just felt on it, and then you're getting your cinema for your cinema. But if you can get the old-fashioned one, it's clear. I prefer that one. 
<laughs> but then with that one, you do not allow it to touch any water whatsoever, or don't, or if you stiffen it before the hat has been worked on, like at least a day before, that's fine. Or you can stiffen it afterwards when it's really dry, but don't put it on and then stiffen with it or put it on as soon as you stiff, uh, stiffened your hat, I mean, blocked your hat, sorry, because it will be damp. And then you'll get white marks. Yes, I've, I've used clear PVA uh, with the dilution one to four, but I still find on dark felts, it leaves white marks. So I think I'm going to go, sorry? With the clear one. With the clear PVA. So I think I might go back, I might go back to the, um, the Unfortunately, it's chemical uh, felt stiffener, isn't it? Yeah, I find that's a little bit stronger. So if, I, if my client wants a really hard hat, then I'll put two, three layers of that in and I'm fine. But if it's a PVA, it just takes a little bit longer to make it that hard and that stiff. I, I get the white marks with the smelly one as well. All right. So with that, you might have, it might be damp or you might have blocked it too quickly and it hasn't dried. Right, okay. Enough. Yeah. Um, also, you can um, sometimes I'll get a dry cloth and I'll put that over the stain if I did get one and then iron it and then that takes away some of the stain sometimes. Thank you. <laughs> I think you can also use um, hairspray to get rid of the white marks. Yeah. Somebody said that already. Yeah. Oh, not not here, but yeah, that's the chat. <laughs> Yeah. That worked with the PVA one. Um, I haven't mm. tried it with the clear one, but I'm sure it probably does work as well. I also wanted to say with the Petersham ribbon, because um, I think it is different suppliers call it different things, don't they? But it's just checking that it has got the loops. Mm. Um, and I think it's to do with the, the cotton content. Yeah, is, is, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want it to be able to shrink. Higher, to yeah, split. a higher cotton content, and that's that's what helps it to shrink. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more nylon-y. I don't like it much. It doesn't work as well. No. Mm. Technically, grow grain means the ridges, and that's what grow grain means because there's grow grain fabric also, and it has the ridges in it. And the Petersham, you so you have to look for the loops rather than a fused top. Mm. Mm. So technically, they're both a grow grain. And that's what the confusion comes from. It has to do with the ridges, but you do want the cotton or rayon one that, that shrinks. Yeah, true. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Right, I'm just gonna quickly talk to you about the Academy and then we can come back to questions and prizes. And I will answer everybody else's question as well. Just bear with me, if you're already in the Academy, bear with me a minute, just what I quickly show everyone because I just want to show you what's going on behind it. Um, can you all see me sharing my screen? Uh, very little, yeah, it's teeny. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's just as long as you can see me doing it, we're getting there. And then, oh, oh, what am I doing? No, nope, don't want that. Okay, can you all see that saying Catherine Elizabeth Academy? No, can you push learn more? No, all we can see is no, sorry. <laughs> Simplifying your communications with Yeah, people. it's a Zoom page. Oh, oh no. It's a Zoom page. You need to close that window down. That's a good point. Thank you. I'm really useless at all these. Uh... Can you see it now? It's frozen. No. no. It's frozen with the Zoom sort of sliding off to one side. You might want to unshare and then share again. Ah, because it's there. I don't know if I can do this then. I think if you hit one of the tabs, is it PDF yeah. Catherine? Learn more. Hit, I would heard learn yeah. more. That's what happened to me. You're share actually you're sharing your page. You just need to hit the tab that you want to show us. Yeah, yeah. But it's in uh, keynotes. If you go oh, to the okay. side, Catherine, um, you've got two little boxes. You can reduce your screen down there. Right, very right hand side. And then you should be able to move that out of the way and. We'll see that. your, yeah. If you do the yellow one, yeah, the yellow one should get rid of it. And then your keynote should be behind it. 
I, I would personally, Catherine, just come out of stop sharing, get the screen you want and then share in the background. And that will, that will mean it will be OK for you because it is hard, quite hard to fiddle around with some of those controls. Thanks, guys. Can you see it now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tech. I really hate tech. I need someone else to do it. No. Right. Quickly. Right. This is when you get into the Millinery Academy. This is obviously our first welcome page. Um, this has been going for about a year, oh, two years nearly now. And we have loads of lovely people in it. We've got a really lovely community. We've got over 200 people in there already. Um, and in there, I teach you how to make hats. So every month we have a, sorry, every other month we have a millinery training. And then every other month we have a business training. So it's like one month millinery, next month business, next month millinery, next month okay. business. And the business side, I know that sounds a little bit boring, but bear with me because at the beginning people didn't really want the business. I thought I'm going to put it in anyway, because it's just really interesting if you want to set this up and you want to start making money from it. And we've got in there photography. So you wouldn't think that's business, but photography is really helpful. PR to get press and publicity, um, how to do your website, how to do a basic website, all about the Instagram and the Facebook and Facebook ads and all that sort of side of it as well. Um, and how to get customers, how to find customers, pricing, um, how to get your confidence up for selling and all that sort of side of it as well. And if you go into the website, you actually see the first page is sort of the top, the welcome video, and then you've got bundles. So all our training is called bundles. And then you've got some bonuses there. And then you've also got the Facebook group on the, on the right. So that way you can get into our private Facebook group where we've got all the lovely people in there who are willing to help you. And I'm in there as well to help. Um, also, we have Q and A's at the end of every month. So whenever we put our training up, we then have the Q&A at the end of every month where the expert will come on or if it's done made by myself, then I will come on. I mean, I'll come on to everyone actually, but I will just, it will just be me for the millinery ones. Um, and then the business ones, we have them as well. So you can ask questions in that, in the um, trainings. See if I can move that. We're not doing very well today. <laughs> now working right so then once you go into bundles mm -hmm. you will then see we've got a couple here just knotted size with judy bentick photography bundle parasizal bundle so for the hat making side of it we've got um a backer leather parasizal ascot hats trilbies we've got about 25 trainings already and you can see some more here so ascot love your website how to create sculptural felt skyrocket your business with pr um confidence then once you go into one of those and you pick one then you've got the intro video with me you've got a checklist to download and you've got a workbook to download so that then gives you more help you also get discounts with certain suppliers and things when you join you also get your training so then you'll see the videos this one is the first one which is all about headpieces so if you're new then you'll go right to the bottom and you'll just look at the headpiece one and that will teach you how to wire and edge and do everything you need to make the basic first headpiece um, and this one has 10 lessons already. So then you just click on each one, one, two, three, four, five, and you'll see all of the different videos. So that's always there. And if we have experts and we have their underneath, we'll have sort of the information from them. And when we do the q and A, I I always then put that into the bundle. So you do the Q&A at the end of the month, and then that will be recorded and put into the um, section at the bottom as well. And then in your bonuses, you have the Instagram guide, uh, business, how to get funding and another PR guide. And there'll be, will be more um, added to that. This is one of our experts and she was talking to us about the how to get business funding. Jessica, she runs a um, jewellery business and another sort of online business as well, like myself. So she's very clever, very knowledgeable. Um, and that one is that's just to show you sort of what it looks like to have other experts in. Um, and we've had Beverly Edmondson, like I say, Judy Bentick. Um, we've had, Steph, um, what's her name? Sorry, Svetlana talking about flowers um, for us as well. So just to tell you, we've got the lovely community. We've got the Q&A every month. If you want to join us and come in, then I've got a special discount for you. You get Ooh. support from me. Um, you get access to me. You can message me or you can email me. Um, I'm always in the Facebook group every day, so you can just tag me in. Um, we all, you get training for 24 hours a day, so wherever you are around the world, you get training to for the millinery. You can go in 
where whenever we're sleeping you might it might be all daytime so then you can go in and have a look and learn from whatever time and it's brilliant now because you know this time that we're in i think next february march hopefully march it's all going to go crazy again once everybody can get out they're all going to be putting their hats on and going to events and i think it's going to be double the amount of people wanting to go crazy so if you're thinking about doing this as a business learn now learn the trade just get um, a you know good basic skill in sort of the beginning of it if you're new headpieces and then you can get a basic website up it teach you all of this sort of thing get it all going ready for the next year so then you can hit the ground running and sort of start selling your pieces and today um, what you can do is actually join what it is it's 38 pounds a month but i'm doing if you join within 48 hours which is by wednesday evening you can get 10 pound off your first month with code 10 off um, if you join for six months you also get your 10 pound off and it's 35 pound a month and if you join for a whole year it's 35 pound a month and you get one month free so it does go up the longer you stay but all of these trainings each one you would probably pay over 100 pounds you know some people would even charge more than that for the training because there's quite a lot in it and i take you from the beginning right through to how to make something so if you're doing ascot hats it'll be all about how to do the base and how to put the top on and different ways of making the sculptural part and then you're attaching feathers and flowers and and all this sort of thing so there's a lot of training going on in it and it's all fun i just i'm obsessed with millinery so i just want everyone else to have fun and make as well so like I say, the fast action bonus is join within 48 hours and re receive £10 off. Um, also, if you join within 48 hours, you can get a training with myself. So you can actually learn how well, that's sort of my five basic best tips to starting a millinery business. So it'll be also you can ask me questions on the live as well and whatever else you want to ask me. But it's just sort of the, the five things that I think you need in place to be able to sell your hats. Also, um, Highland, sorry, yes, Highland Hat Block has very kindly given us a £50 voucher and some of the hat blocks are only 60 odd pounds anyway, so you can near enough get a whole hat block. Um, and so one person is going to win that, so you'll all go into a prize draw. So everybody that joins within the next 48 hours, which is Wednesday evening, uh, will get that. So you'll come on the Q&A with me, you'll, the training, you'll go into the prize draw for the 50 pounds and you'll get the 10 pound off. So the website, the um, membership site is only open every three months. And it's only going to be open now until the end of the week and then we're going to close it again for another three months so i just sort of open it for people to come in and join and then i close it again and then i can concentrate on everybody that's in it and we can all learn and then i'll open it again three months later so if you didn't want to join you want to join next time you'll just have to wait the three months if you are going to join us now then that'd be fabulous so there's a few testimonials from a couple of people lovely people that are in it um don't forget your qualification as well yeah so that's the new thing so we've got the qualification if you would like that it is an extra cost but with that you do the 12 months and every month you hand your work into me in our market and at the end of the 12 months we'll have a qualification for you to say that you've passed that and you've got to a great standard so every month i will crit your work i will tell you what you need to do to make it better change things um, and we also have our q a for that so you get to meet everybody um, and that's sort of a smaller compact group where you get more attention from me and then you get the qualification so if you want that once you get into the academy you can sign up for that as well and then here's a few things that some guys have made sort of felt hats um, nice head pieces so ascot hat i mean this is a tiny amount so we've got probably 250 people in there now uh, all making hats sharing their work asking questions it's a lovely group and it's quite nice because everybody's really helpful and you can see everybody's work and if you just ever get stuck on anything you can just say hey how do i do this help me i can come in and help you as well Someone just asked what sort of um, qualification? It's the Catherine Elizabeth. It's my qualification. It's a private one. So it's not accredited by the government. It's just a sort of private school, Catherine Elizabeth Millinery, Millinery House um, qualification. So you just get that and then you can put it in a frame if you would like to, or I can get you one <laughs> and put it up. So that's it. And um, if you wanted to join, it's just the code is... 
here 10 and then off and the website is i should tell you that it's the millinery and business academy so if you just put millinery and business academy.com into google you'll find it and then you can read more information you can see some testimonials and then you can sign up there and you can tick pick whatever tier you want you can do monthly you could do six monthly so then it just charges you every six months um, or you can do the whole year one. If you want to cancel, say you join monthly and you want to cancel and you think it's not for you, you just tell me or you go to the admin section and you cancel, it's really easy. So you can just say, I don't want that anymore and do that. Um, I don't hold you into anything. I don't make people stay. It's just if you like it, you'll stay. If you don't, then you don't. Then you don't. Um, all the videos on there, they're not downloadable, but you watch them from anywhere around the world on the website. So you can just go on anytime and you can you know, have a look. So whilst you're a member, you're sort of paying for access. That's why it's cheaper. Because if you're, if you are actually buying all of the training, you pay hundreds of hundreds of pounds. You know, it's probably five grand's worth of training in there um, so you get access to watching it and then the workbooks and the checklist you can download those and you can keep them yourself and you can fill them in and you've always got that information and you've always got the support group as well so it's a really good low price because I just want to keep it that way to help people you need to read the comments because you've got all the people that are in your uh, academy already saying I've been in it for so long and it's amazing and and I agree with them because I've been in for two months and I've learned so much Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. That's yeah. right. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you say you, you close the, if we join today, when does the membership start from? So you join today, it's from today. So if you join tonight, then you can go straight in. So you get an automatic email and then you get a personal one from me. Um, I'll just stop showing my screen. I can come back. Okay. I can answer all your questions. So if you join, you go straight in um, and then you can join the Facebook group straight away and you'll just, you'll get in and you can sort of have a look tonight. You can start having a look around. Okay. So it's, as soon as people join, you'll get automatic email, but then I'll also be sending out personal ones, just telling you a little bit more. So, you know, if you're new at it, you would start at the bottom and then you do that one first. And then you can pick your way around and pick different ones. I just think you just need the basics of doing the first one. If you're an intermediate milliner, then you can just go in and start having a look around and pick the ones that you really like. So that price covers everything, does it? You don't pay anything extra then for anything else? It's the qualification and VIP area. Okay. Thank you. So that, that is, that's got sort of extra things and um, we have our extra Q&A and then you get the qualification. But if you don't want that, then that's fine. You only pay your 38 or your 35, however you've joined. And it's a roll on thing. So it's a membership site. So you don't pay for one month and then go. Um, you, it will come out every month. But if you don't want that to happen, you just cancel it. Okay. Catherine, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, if you take it for more than a year, do you repeat and go back? Does the do the instructions repeat and go back to the beginning, or do you go into something new? Something new. So that's because we've been going for two years now. That's why we've got our twenty five, you know, programs already in there. So you know, you're getting a very good deal because everybody else has been in there and they've been getting them every month, and you're joining and you're getting all of that, and you're getting the new things that are coming up. Um, I am going to start restricting it, but I ha just haven't done yet because of COVID. So if you join now, then you won't get any restrictions. You've got everything. And then, you know, every month I'm bringing new things out. We've still got a big list of things to sort of teach everybody. You know, maybe in five years we'll run out of things. But at the moment, we've still got a lot more to go and a lot of experts to bring in and different things to teach. Okay. We do, we do hat, fr hat down Fridays as well. And um, Catherine always asks us what, what we'd like as bundles and things like that. So it, you know, it's fed by um, people that are in the group, which is um, a fantastic idea. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I forgot about that. We have a hat down Friday. I love that. We all have a drink. And then we just, I sort of talk about the week and tell you what wins I've had, what things have gone wrong, answer any questions, answer any questions um, and then sort of tell you what's happening in the academy, what's going on, what new things are coming up and things like that. Don't I? So thank you very much. What you actually is the, you also give tips each Fridays. You have a special topics and you always give tips each Friday and you have special topics each, each Friday. Yeah. So I like to 
pick something that's happened in the week that's taught me something or something I've been thinking about. Yeah, and I do, don't I? I just sort of share that with you. So we try and keep it to 20 minutes, but it ends up being an hour because <laughs> we're just talking and teaching. And some of them are really quite in depth and people it sort of really helps some of you, I think. Um, you know, if you've, re you've really got into it at certain times and it's just helped different things that have, that have come up as helped different people. So that's really nice. That's so we always what's have that once a week to keep everybody involved and let you know what's going on. What's the definition of a bundle? Sorry, a bundle is just a training. So it's just oh. a, a nicer word of saying training. So it's a, okay. it's a class, but it's an online okay. class. So you might be paying for a hack class or you might be paying for a Zoom. Here you're, you're paying for this training and it's, it's coming out. Um, normally my videos when I'm teaching you how to make hats, so we did purchase recently. Um, we did a sort of futuristic hat, which was just, I love thing that one, all these different ways of using plastics and recycling and doing different things with them. And, um, some people made some amazing hats and it was Leanne got into the hat talk magazine with her one that she made. So they actually printed it and put it in there. And, um, we're, I was probably about 10 videos in that, maybe more. Um, so they're not all an hour long, you know, there's 10 minutes, there's five minutes, there's 20 minutes. So you're not going to be there. I don't want you to worry that you're going to be there too long. But um, there's enough training, there's loads of it to teach you. Um, Is there homework and challenges? The home, well, you if you're doing the VIP one, the qualification, then you'd have to do it that month. So you'd have to do one of the bundles that month, and then you hand it to me that month, you send it to me, and then you um, can get the qualification at the end of the year, but I always mark it at the end of the month. So that is more a time consuming, kind of restricting. But if you're just doing it as the normal, you can decide which one to pick. If you're too busy that month, you don't have to do it. You can come back and you can do another one. You can do them with us every month and then come on the Q and A's, or you can do another bundle that we're not focusing on that month if that's better for you. So there isn't any pressure and there isn't any, I haven't done a challenge in there like this one, but we're always talking to each other, we're always sort of every Friday, like we say, we've got Hat Down Friday. So, um, you know, you can talk to everyone, you can ask us questions, you can ask me questions. So that's our sort of little reminder to try and get everybody to do it. But sometimes life takes away with you and you're busy for that month and then you come back into the group again. So it's sort of, it's okay. If you'd want to step back, you can, but if you want to be full in with it, then you can join us on everything. Brilliant, thank you. Okay. Does it cost a bundle to uh, to send it from New York City to your house? <laughs> What's that? A bundle? Does it, does it cost a bundle, which means a lot, to send from New York City <laughs> to your house? That's free. <laughs> the but internet. So you pay so um, uh, your fee every month. Let's say you join monthly and you're paying 38 a month. Then you just access the website from wherever you are and then you can watch it. So but it's for you to check our work. Ah, sorry, that's by Dropbox. Um, you can you send it to me and you send lots of different images of your sort of putting okay. in the wire, putting this edging on, closed up images, um, all via Dropbox or we transfer, and then I can study it and I can watch it also. Sorry, yes, I don't mean for you to have to physically send it to me because that would take too much of your time and you're losing the hat and everything and sending it back and all of that. So you can do it all online and there's also a um, sheet that you need to fill in either for the business side if you're doing that that particular month or the hat side and you just fill in the form and then explain to me what you're doing and what you've picked and why. Um, so a little questionnaire and then at the end of the year for the qualification you have a little mini exam just to sort of check that you are okay with everything and you've remembered certain things and then I can give it to you. Okay. okay. And if you haven't passed that month, because say I think, well, you need to check the stitching, you need to change things, then I will ask you to, and then you'll do that, and then you'll hand it back to me, and then we'll say, okay, you passed that month. But so far, everyone's been fine. <laughs> <laughs> Jan says the Academy's brilliant. Thanks, Jan. Yeah, thank you for helping me with the Zoom. Um, the Academy's wonderful. Thanks, Rachel. Academy's fabulous. I joined in June and have learned so much. Michelle, thank you. I love that. Shall I put in, I'm going to put in the link in case you want to have a look. So it's just millineryandbusinessacademy.com. There. 
Um, is it good for beginners? As I don't think I would be good enough to sell any hats I make. Yeah, that's fine. So the beginners one, we started off really simply at the beginning, and then I built up and built up because I wanted to, you know, to not leave out anybody who is a beginner. So even though people, some people joined at the beginning who were intermediate, they just sort of waited um, with me until we caught up with them. So the beginning ones are basic. It's about headpieces. It's your wiring, your edging, learning all of that. You stitch everything. So I do not glue anything. So you're sewing all of your cinema edging on and show you how to do all of that. I also talk to you about the blocks, what sort of blocks you might need. Um, and sort of the fabrics and the trimmings and things about Petersham and what stiffener you'd need. So it's good to watch that beginning one just to learn. And then from then you can work your way up. So it gets harder as you go up. So I wouldn't go straight to the Percha bundle because you might get a bit, oh, because you know I don't show you all of the wiring and edging because you've already learned all of that in the other one. So just start at the bottom and work your way up. But if you already know what you're doing, you're intermediate, then you can pick and choose. Would you like me to show you what they, um, what we do in the me intermediate? I've just finished mine. In the beginning, yeah. I've just finished mine. So this is the beginner bundle and so that's a cinema. Is that felt or cinema? Cinema. Yes, I can see now. Yes, the edging on there. Brilliant. Thank you. And you've curled all your quill as well. So that's the beginners. Okay. Beginners one. I've I've put headband in mine because, and I've also lined it. So, but that's you. that's basically what you learn. That so that's just the first one and then we go on from there and you can pick whatever shape you want so i show you how to do it with a nice big head so say here i've got oops i've got a crown block here it's got a plastic on it at the moment but you can actually decide when you're using this what area you want to cut so you can make it into different sizes uh, so if you can't afford blocks and you join and you think, oh gosh, you know, I now need blocks. There are ways of getting around that as well, like using a polystyrene head and paper macheing it um, just as a basic one, um, using things like plates and bowls, um, big wooden bowls and, and things like that. And also we can get you some button blocks at a reasonable price if you want to use those. Um, so you, it's not an awful lot mostly it's the time hats aren't that expensive things like fabrics it's just the time it takes and that's what makes the hats more expensive or you can use a melon yeah it's a wooden bowl so you can use anything really for them yes yeah i love doing that i used to use coffee lids uh, woks. Um, I think I've said before I used a wok and sprayed the inside of it with spray foam and then took it out and I had a, a brim block so that was all that was all good. Catherine. Just see if there's any questions Brandy. and I'll tell you who the winners are. This for anybody is who's nervous. Pardon? For anybody who's nervous about joining I'd never done any millinery whatsoever before May um, and I've just absolutely loved it. It's been wow. it's been great. <laughs> absolutely addicted now. That's exactly how I felt. It just you can't put it down, can you? Because there's no one thing you can put on a hat, and there's sculptures that you can wear, and it's just oh my god. I even set up a Facebook page now to show people oh, my work. Oh I never ever thought I would do. If you're a crafty person, I think millinery is brilliant because you, you're able to wear it and it's just, it puts art and fashion and craft and everything all in one, isn't it? Just well, I'd never been crafty. I failed oh. my all, I failed my all, I failed my all level out. <laughs> I've never I done love it. your hat. <laughs> I think all you need to be able to do is sew. Yeah. Hand or yeah. machine? Just by hand. It's all by hand, yeah. We don't use sewing machines. Um, unless you want to make a massive bow and it's going to take you ages and then you can use a machine but I try and avoid machines I do everything by hand Good. I love hand sewing I love it so you can do it anywhere can't you on the train you know just put it down go outside take it out for a walk and then sew a bit it's hard as a dressmaker when you use sewing machines all the time <laughs> And then yeah, you've got to go to hand sewing. Hand sewing. Oh, I couldn't sew a dress though. It would take so long, wouldn't it, by hand? <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, I've got a few questions here. What type of quilt? 
Okay, I've told you about qualification, I think. Academy's brilliant, thanks, Jan. Um, Academy's fabulous, I joined in June and learned so much, thank you. Even if you've been making hats for a long time, the Academy's wonderful, ah! <laughs> Lots of great tips, instructions. Um, oh, thank you so much, guys, for all that. Thank you. Six months now, Bonnie, wow. Uh, you can cancel any time if you pay monthly. Yeah, um, and if you even if you do six monthly, then before your next six months comes out, if you don't want to stay in, then you just cancel it beforehand. Uh, what was the discount code? So that was ten off. Uh, my apologies, I need to go now. Well done, ah, Fleur, Fleur. Um, that's a shame. Thank you for letting me in again, Catherine. I lost signal. I joined three months ago and enjoyed the fact you can take it at your own pace, learn so much in such a short period of time. Brilliant. I just want everyone to be able to learn quickly and, you know, just have a, I just love what I'm doing. So I want other people to sort of love making and having a career in it. Thank you. Carol likes my teaching style. Thank you. Uh, is it good for beginners? As I don't know, I'd be good enough to sell anything. Yes, fine for beginners. What was the discount code? That's 10 off. Definitely interested, brilliant. Have just worked out how to read the chat as well as watch the video. Um, really looking forward to being part of the academy I joined last week. Can't wait. Yeah, brilliant. I look out for secondhand blocks on eBay. That's a good thing. Secondhand blocks on eBay. Yeah, if you can grab them. What could I use as a block for a mini top hat and itching to make one of these? Top hat, um, a coffee jar, then you can just use that long bit for the top and then the flat bit, just use a flat surface, circle, three layers of cinema together, wire the edge, cut out the middle and then put your oblong top long bit on top of that. A bit like when you're making a mother the bride hat, you just have to make little slits inside the brim bit for it to fit into. Well, guys, I'd like you to know that this one is something I've never done before and I'm going to use it as one of my 50 for 50 as I was 50 in July and I've been to try, trying to do 50 things I've never done before, mm. which I started last year when I actually met Her Majesty the Queen. <gasps> Did you? Oh, yeah. Hang on, guys. Horses, where were you? Ooh. It was at um, the British oh, Diamond oh. Society show at Windsor. And I was groomed for a friend of mine and she won yeah. her class and we got introduced to Her Majesty. Wow. Fabulous. Wow. wow. So you got a big bug for hats as well. Because of the yeah, uh, the queen. Yeah, <laughs> we have to. But when I groom, it's only a normal vintage top hat. But when I do the uh, Concord d'Elegance, we do the fancy hats as well. So I have had a beautiful um, Victorian star hat made for me for my 50th from my husband. So yeah, hats are a big part of what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, horsing world. Definitely with the carriage driving, because that's what we do, we're carriage drivers. Uh, so, um, Victorian carriages, um, one of ours was built in 1889 and the springing of it was done by Rolls-Royce, so. Wow, yeah. ah, I love Rolls-Royce too. One day, we'll get in there. <laughs> um, sorry, Deborah says, desperate to join the Academy, income is rather uncertain currently, was optimistic that I may join next time round. Um, that's fine, but you if you did want to join, you get £10 off this month, so it is less this month, but that's all good. Oggy, hi, I've joined the Academy nearly three months ago and I've learned a lot so far. Lovely to have you. Um, oh yeah. Okay, we can come back to these questions after, yeah. All right, so let's see who has won. Oh my God! I've got to take a picture of all of you as well. Don't let me forget that because there is another prize, a fourth prize for all of you guys because you've come on here with me. So I want to take screenshots of you all. 
just to make sure I can then pick someone and then I can tell you later on. But the first prize is a Petersham's box. So this is a, a sort of remnants box and it's 50 pounds worth. <gasps> and this goes to Abby Day. Hey! Well done, Abby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. It's really not, I thought it was really smart, very well um, executed, and well done, all the bits and pieces that were on it. Um, cat. Can we see the winning hat? It's here. Oh, well done, Abby. Thank you. Well, look online, oh my it's dark now, isn't it? But on the Facebook, you can see it. Yeah, I've not got good lighting. Oh. <laughs> so well done. Um, Thank you. Honestly, I could have given it to like a hundred of you. There were just so many people at, at the top. It is just brilliant. Um, second prize is Charlotte Marie Ince. Charlotte Marie Ince. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Yes, hi. Well done. Oh my god. I like your I like your hat a lot, Charlotte. Well done. <laughs> you see? My oh, that's so and well done to me as well. <laughs> oh my god. Back to it. I really like the you know the balance and what you have in it. Well, so I'm embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's lovely. Oh, so I nearly picked Nikki Miller and Samantha Patrick and there was others and Leanne Cairns and just so many of you I really could have given loads to. So those are the first and second. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, second prize is a year subscription to Hat Talk. So are you with Hat Talk already? I'm not. Okay. Is that my one? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not with it. I that's amazing. So that, yeah, that's, and then you, you'll get in that loads of more training and different things. And, and yeah, no, I, I, love, I love to do that. I'd love to have that, yeah. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> and then Abby's going to get a whole 50 quid box of stuff. And I think last time someone got it, they were like, oh, all this stuff. So that hopefully that'll be good. Now, share a one. Everybody that's shared, I've put you into this teapot. <laughs> Joan Reeves. Joan, thank you. So Joan Reeves, you can either have an MS gift, um, you know, food box or beauty box, or um, you can have a, I think, I think the other thing I was saying, a block, I think it was, or something else on the list. So you can pick, so I'll message you and then you can pick what you would like. <coughs> And then let me take screen. Catherine. Yeah. It's Joan. I'm so oh, excited. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing. So many of you shared. It was really good. And so I couldn't pick one person. It was just so well done. Oh, uh, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> good. I want to give more. <laughs> I might do that in the end. I might give another one. But let's um, take a picture of everyone. So I've got everyone's name on, I think. Yeah. If you don't want to be seen, just turn your camera off, and as long as I've got your name up here, you can take screenshots. Oh no, that always goes. Bear with me, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, going cheese. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is number four. How many are on? 169 still. You'll be here all night. <laughs> You'll be there forever, Catherine. Right, now at five, nearly done. <laughs> um, yeah, there's seven screens, six. I think. Last one. As long as I got all in hats, I saw a maiden lady. Mm hmm. There we go. And I can see all your beautiful faces. <laughs> this was really on. <laughs> so yeah. So do you have any other questions before we finish? 
about hats or anything else? Would it I'd like to thank you, Catherine, you. Catherine, for being so supportive with everything, especially with my anxiety and everything. Thank you so much uh -huh. for being there. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy. Thank you. I'm glad I could help bits, and it's really nice as well. You know, doing lockdown, and it's nice for me as well. I mean, I'm in the same position, working from home most of the time, so it's all nice to talk to you. So thank. Well, you. thank you for the chance of trying something completely new. Mm. Um, I hope the back of my hat stayed up long enough to see it. <laughs> but um, what a what a great week! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm so glad you all had fun. You're a lovely bunch. And we'll have to pick something for next time. If we do it again in a, you know, three or four months, we'll pick something for next time. New hat. Thank you, Catherine. Congratulations, guys, for winning. Yeah, thank you. 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 Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, well done, everyone. Honestly, thank you, you Catherine. Happy Christmas. Have a good Christmas. If you've got any other questions to why you want to ask me or put in the chat box, feel free. Oh, can I ask fast? Hello. Yeah. I have a question, like technical question with regards to the second. Is there any method how you attach it to the felt? Because I'm really struggling and take ages so i decided to add a little bit more sparkle so it's ah. on the line but it takes ages to attach it because mm -hmm. they're doing basically in i'll do like invisible stitch so you can try and you can they could be a centimeter apart from each other so you mm -hmm. can attach the sequin to the felt and then push your needle through the felt so that you don't really sort of through here this bit so you don't really see the stitch and then come out and then grab another bit and then down and go through the felt again. Yeah, this will have to be both sides, but your stitches yeah, look like they're really close together, sort of machine stitch looking sort of stitches. So you can do it so you'll hide the stitches. And if they're just a little bit further apart, it'll be quicker for you. Right, okay. But the only other thing is glue and I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't glue no. them on at all. So if I, they were sewing something on like that, then I would just come out Go catch a little bit of that back into the felt, move along and then out and then keep doing that, move along. Mm -hmm. And whenever you move along, you're going inside this felt so you don't see it. Okay, thank you. Welcome. What fabric do you recommend for lining? Um, I like silks, but sometimes they can just, you know, catch and, and look a bit messy after a while. So just satins, you could use nice, but pretty. And I tend to use bright colours, anything that's shiny, nothing that's stretchy, because that's quite hard to sew in. Okay. Silks or satins. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Karen missed how to attach my elastic. Can you quickly show me? I've got the doodah here. Um, but you need to just, I'm gonna, uh, this is going to be recorded. Well, it is recorded. So I'm going to put it up into the group so you can watch again. You can just watch the beginning bit. So what we did was we got this and we made a loop and we just found the middle of it and then just attach a little bit of thread to the side and then wrap it around, wrap it around 10 times and then go underneath some of the thread just to knot it and then you have a little loop and then your loop needs to sew in to this section here a bit like this one. So then you just sew around and around and around it. But um, once this is up in the Facebook group, you can just watch this again and see the, the beginning bit. Judith says, Merry Christmas, everyone. I love to take part in this challenge. So many fabulous hat designs from you all. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go then. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. You're wonderful. Bye. Bye. Ciao.
Bye. Bye. Yes, push.